Well, today marks World Science Day for Peace and Development and highlights the crucial role that science plays in our society. Well, the day was proclaimed by the United Nations Scientific and Cultural Organization back in 2001 to ensure that citizenry are informed about the latest developments in science. Well, to chat some more about this, we're joined in studio by Sir Stuart Nklati, a visionary and an entrepreneur and an innovator who runs the Stuart Nklati Science, Engineering and Technology. Technology Institute. Good afternoon, Stuart. Always a pleasure to have you with us on the SABC News well. Desk. Uh, Stuart, before we get right into it, I read an article recently uh, describing you as an impossible dreamer, and dreamers is what our country needs at uh, this point. Uh, just share a little bit of your journey with us and how you developed uh, such a passion for the sciences. Uh, thank you for having me in studio. Um, my story dates back to the year 2000 when I was age 13. Mm. And uh, one afternoon, my friend invited me for lunch at his place. And when I got to his place, he then heated food using this device I've never seen before, uh, what we call the microwave. Uh, we're having minced meat and rice, and he just mm. put it in for a few minutes, and then boom, the food was hot. Mm. I had never seen a microwave at that point in my life. I was flabbergasted. I was like... What is this? Mm, mm. Immediately I went home and I asked my grandmother, how come we don't have this device? And mind you that in 2000, it was costing no less than 3000, the microwave. Yes. I spent an entire week to research what a microwave is, how it works, and I said, I'm going to make a better one. And, and you did, of course. And uh, yeah, within two mm. weeks, um, I had created the world's first uh, griller microwave. There was no griller function in the world at that uh, time. And interestingly, that was done with recyclable materials. Recyclable material. I spent actually mm. 13 rands to create that microwave. Mm. And to this date, my former high school, they still use it to heat uh, food. We just sub uh, give them uh, maintenance uh, uh, back in home in, uh, at home in Joburton. Mm. So my story dates back there. And then I've, s I've been inventing ever since. And um, 18 years down the line, we are here, and um, I'm happy that three of our technologies are finally coming out to the market. It has been a, an impossible, difficult journey. Mm -hmm. yes. Now, you've come a long way from the microwave griller when you were 13 years yes. old, and you've done some phenomenal work at your institute where you actually try and ignite that spark for the sciences and the interest and passion for sciences and mathematics at your institute. Tell us a little bit about that and how it was established. Um, uh, through the microwave, I ended up participating at various science competitions. Mm -hmm. And I realized that I was always the only black kid. Yes. And I had a problem with that. Yes. Even today, 18 years since that, uh, South African young people still consider math and science to be for specifically gifted people. Right. So I decided to establish an after-school science lab, mm. which la later turned into a fully-fledged institute that uh, develops new tech. So um, what we, we decided to do back then was to give after-school workshops. Mm. So these workshops, we were training them and entering them for the same competitions I was entering. Mm. So over the years, we developed the only of its kind program called YIP, Young Innovators Program, where we invite South African kids across 26,600 schools mm. to enter for this program. So you have to write an essay, mm. tell us about the technology you think it can change the future, and then from there, we then uh, invite the top 100 essays in the country. Our most recent in Daba, we had no less than 30,000 entries coming through. Mm -hmm. You know, kids are, are desperately interested in this field, but there's no support base. Mm -hmm. So during this, uh, we, uh, we use the SNZ Institute platform to showcase them to world-class technologies, expose them to things that they've never seen mm -hmm. or thought that these things only exist in movies. By the way, we are now entering the realm of the fourth industrial re revolution. Yes. And I can say this now, we are not ready as a country, mm. but SNZ Institute has been working tirelessly over the last 18 years to try by all means to introduce this to mm. the young people of the country. Mm. Uh, and it's interesting you meet that because I've just read a recent analysis on student intake and it's, it reveals that most students in Klaati still enter into the arts and humanities, then mathematics, science and engineering. Why is this? Because you're working with students on a daily basis. Is it just a lack of access to information about the possibilities or the requirements of uh, post-schooling uh, options out there? Uh, or are learners just unwittingly narrowing their choices because they don't have the information they need at hand? I'm not going to lie to you. Mm -hmm. Science and maths are extremely boring mm -hmm. as they come as a curriculum. Mm -hmm. Very boring to an extent that everyone is running away from science and maths. Mm. 
kids sit there and ask themselves, how is X and Y going to help me to excel post-metric? But when you are doing uh, su subjects such as commercial subjects, those learning areas, how when you prepare the income statement, the balance sheet, and mm. so on, it's, mm. uh, it's the same process you follow in real life. Mm. So how do you convince a grade 10 learner to take maths and science and show them that building the Mandela Bridge, you are going to uh, work with trigonometry, calculus, mm. and geometry. Mm. So we, we need to uh, relook at the curriculum, how it is presented. Mm. So if it does not uh, get a reshuffling, we are going to end up with more and more kids running away. By the way, according to the World Economic Forum, mm. we are at the bottom, you mm. know, on the, on yes. the, on the ranking in yes. math and science. So yes. uh, in my experience over the last 18 years, I've established that this, this uh, um, absent interest on math and science by the South African youth is due to the subject. Uh, the content is boring, it's not interesting. Mm. We cannot relate to X and Y story. Mm. Mm. Well, it is World Science Day. Um, can you speak to us about the significance of today and how it relates to skills and development in the country right now? Um, firstly, uh, you can also tell in the country there's no celebrations happening right yes. now. You know, the celebrations happening, they are close to exactly. nothing. But science uh, has played a pivotal role in, in uh, bringing about peace and development, especially in our country. Mm. When you look at technologies we take for granted, such as drones, you know, mm. drones play a, ma a major role in maintaining mm. peace. You know, okay. young people are not even aware that there are drones flying out there in the sky, uh, playing as, uh, the, the role of the Air Force or security. And unfortunately, there are no skills in the country yes. to look after these uh, new technologies and careers yes. that are entering the market. And as such, uh, you will always have a limited skill base in the country. Mm. Mm. We have the square kilometer array being built in the Northern Cape. Mm. Uh, over 6,000 uh, skills are being exported, you know, yes. nothing yes. in the country. Uh, and if we try to internationalize this, for the first time in the history uh, of the planet, we face simultaneous challenges of terror, conflict, the worst refugee and migrant crisis since World War II. Uh, so it becomes crucial that we start looking to science for sustainable solutions we need indeed uh, just one thing you've 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 brought a very interesting contraption with us yes. a product of your institute no yes. doubt do you want to tell us a little bit about that it looks like a hairdryer but clearly <laughs> it's not one it's very light um, you can just uh, ch uh, test the weight for yourself yes. this is the auto shoot leaner I invented it when I was uh, 15 years in high in back in my high school at Fadiming High mm -hmm. School in Tlaxdorp. Mm -hmm. uh, what led to this creation was due to my sinuses and asthma and laziness I hated uh, shoe polishing, I hated that process, you know, so mm. I always had to outsource shoe polishing to those who were willing to do it. Right. So I, I, I sat down and I said, look, there has to be a way to, 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 to automate the entire shoe, pro, uh, yes. shoe, shoe cleaning process. Yes. And then at, the, at that point in time, I invented a normal auto shoe cleaner, mm. which was basically just a shoe buffer, an automatic shoe buffer. Mm. So mm. over the years, I have perfected the technology. Mm -hmm. Uh, with my team and now we have this auto shoot cleaner yes. it is an investment in quick and easy shoe cleaning you know mm. it does not only brush and shines your shoes you know it vacuums them it steams them mm -hmm. uh, it keeps them smelling fresh clean and um, it's everything that you can possibly ask for mm. uh, if you are having a uh, brown brown shoes your husband has navy blue uh, formal shoes mm -hmm. no need to stress about that built-in cartridges yes. that detects the color of your shoe buffer and then it will change into the color of the shoe buffer. Are, of the are shoe you retailing that right now? Yes, it's hitting the market uh, next month to oh. a private, uh, the la one of the largest shoe retailers in the country. And what would something like that sell for? It's actually? coming out for three ninety nine. All right. Yes. Thank you so much, Stuart, for your time on the SABC News Desk. Always a pleasure having you with us.